It's fair to argue about the definition of success. But our most admired and successful leaders come out of the most surprising places. The least advantaged with the most to gain. Often solely focused on others. And it's also fair to say that when you grow up in a large family as the tenth of eleven children, you grow up poor. At least in some ways. One day I told my mom I was hungry and I think it was just because I wanted something particular. And I saw her crying and that was kind of my reality is, wow, we are poor. <laughs> because my mom's crying, we don't have extra food. So then I kind of knew. This is the working class neighborhood where Deb, her brothers and sisters, were raised in South Bend. My dad was very proud and would never take anything for free. He was a really hard worker. He was a truck driver. He was gone a lot. You just existed. We had boys in one room, girls in another, and mom and dad in the third, and that was our home. We knew that we had to take care of ourselves. I had friends that had a lot less than I did, and they would tell me how much I had, and I felt very good about that. We didn't feel poor in our home. Salvation Army was a big part of their daily lives. From the day I was born, we went to the Salvation Army for church. Every Sunday morning, my dad would be playing music, to remind us that it's time to get ready and get ready for church. And there was no doubt that everybody would go to church and everybody would behave. We went to the Salvation Army almost every day. We were very, very involved. I was a sunbeam. My mom and dad both taught Sunday school. All of us were very, very involved. I stood at the kettles and rang bells by Kresge's for many years. And that's how we would make a little money for Christmas so that we could buy something for our parents. And that's kind of the way we learned. So through the years, you know, I'd go to school and some of the kids would make fun of me because I didn't have the things. And I think a lot of it too, they made fun of me because they would see me ringing bells or I'd come to their house and sell war cries. My dad's message to me was, don't ever be a victim. Don't ever be a victim. Take care of yourself. If somebody knocks you down, don't, don't blame them. Get up and be stronger poor in some ways, rich in others. We went to the Salvation Army almost every day. The family connection with the Salvation Army and something unexpected changed her life forever. The cornet. Somebody donated it to the Salvation Army and they let me use it. So I got the cornet and I just couldn't stop playing. I would come home from school and the first thing I would do was go upstairs and practice my cornet. And that's what I did all the time. Whenever I had a spare moment, if I wasn't at school or wasn't working, I was playing my cornet. I loved it and I just excelled at it. You know, when I got into to the point in school where I could play, I immediately moved from last chair and I just kept moving up till I got to first chair. And every time I'd go to school, I'd to a different school, I'd be first chair. And it was just a, it made me feel like I could excel at something. All of a sudden I was really good at something and I wasn't being made fun of. And you know, when in the band class, I was in charge because I was first chair and it felt good. She never forgot dad's advice and worked her way through college, including a master's degree at Notre Dame and up from typist at AM General to vice president. It was because my work ethic was just so strong. My brothers were the same way. Working was just what we did. When the campaign to raise matching money to build the Salvation Army Croc Center in South Bend stalled with a million dollars to go, Deb asked her boss if the company would make up the difference. When I was told that they were a million dollars short, I don't know what got into me, but I just went into my boss and I said, one way or another, we have to help them raise money. That's when AM General wrote a check for one million dollars. They let me deliver the check. And that was the greatest experience. 
to be able to just hand over a billion dollar check to somebody that I knew would do a wonderful job. I mean, I just knew how good the Salvation Army is about taking care of people. I mean, when I was a child, we had band lessons, and that was very, very powerful for me, and it just changed my life, just making me feel like I was so important because I could do something well. And um, today, I mean, Notre Dame donates so many instruments, and those children have beautiful new instruments. Band Link, linking Notre Dame band members with South Bend's inner city kids at the Croc Center to make beautiful music. Students from Notre Dame actually go to the Croc Center and provide lessons to those children. And they're amazing. They play at events. I don't know if you've ever been for like the Center for History. You'll see them playing at those events and they do a wonderful job and they feel very good about themselves. It's fair to say that kids in this great community are growing up poor right now at least in some ways. If one used coronet changed Deb's life, what's something like Bandlink doing? If you're used to feeling powerless, it doesn't take much to empower you. Just ask Deb. Only a few things in life can be predicted with certainty. One of them is that future success stories, our most admired men and women, will come from surprising places. Places like the Croc Center. It's why we're here. For others.